Okay, good morning, guys. A few people on already. How's everybody doing? It's Friday. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Which, again, doesn't mean anything. <laughs> we're real estate agents. <laughs> So anybody have um, something good they can share with everybody? I'm waiting a couple more minutes. <coughs> Thank goodness. So some of you, I think, were on the call yesterday with Heather. Uh, do you guys enjoy that? Yes. Good. Good. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't met her or heard her very often, she's very informative and super friendly and also super smart. So that's kind of, it's nice for you to hear someone else talk aside from me and Austin and Samantha. It's like, get some, get some fresh, uh, I guess, fresh voices out there. So let me go here. Okay. All right. So it's a couple, a couple of minutes um, before. So let me just give you a little bit of a rundown of what we're going to do today. Uh, today is all about the a day in the life of a real estate agent. Um, is there anybody on yet who feels that most of their week, uh, if you're full-time, most of your week you're being uh, pretty purposeful about your real estate business? Yes. Yes? Oh, I like that. You wanna share what that means to you? Or, or how, why you feel that way? I have a checklist that I tackle every day and um, I keep adding and as I pull something out, I put three more things on. So it's always a full day. <laughs> wow. That was funny. I didn't know who said that. And then when I saw your name pop up, um, cause I have you, I have everybody minimized. I was like, oh yeah, now I know. Of course she does. <laughs> <laughs> so good, good for you. Very good for you. Um, and this might stem from your past experience um, as well. And could you possibly say, um, well, let me ask it this way, because um, I know a little bit about, about you from before, from our conversations. Um, you've, you've had businesses and, and run a pretty successful, um, you've had a pretty, pretty successful career in some other avenues. Um, why is it important for you to have yourself organized and be purposeful every day, you know, on your work days? Um, for me, it's about moving the needle. And um, I always try to like, I think when we were talking um, at our last meeting, it was, um, everything you've, you've given us to do on our list, I've always tried to double or triple it even if, I, if I'm able to. And where I can, I try to find a different avenue to, to get to that double number or triple number as far as an action plan or items. And it just helps me feel like you've given us all the tools and all the um, ingredients, if you will. So I feel like there's no reason why I can't be successful. I love that. I do. I love that. Um, I'll, I'll give a little bit for myself. For the most part, I think on the call, I have been in the business for quite a while and I'll have, um, mm -hmm. there are times, whether it's for a day, a week, a month, where I haven't necessarily moved that needle like I'd like to. It may be my, um, let me stop sharing for a minute so we can talk for just a moment. It could really be that I haven't um, done as many calls as I'd like to have done because in my mind, I've been busy or 
you know, there's just a there's just a lot of things that can come up in life and in business that can take us away from the main objectives. And uh, because that can happen, where I where I personally, this is me just being sharing and letting you know that um, what is going to bring me back to pull me into the productive mindset and also get the results that I, I may be in a position that I need those results because there's bills to pay and there's clients that are out there that need something done and I need to make sure that I do that. Um, it also could be just, you know, we have things that happen in our lives. Many of us have gone through stuff, whatever that stuff is, and we might need to personally just push ourselves um, ahead. So the topic today is about a successful real estate agent and what does that look like? It's a day in a life. And I do encourage you to find some things that help you move that needle, as Tanya said, to get yourself kind of going and encouraging because you will have times, whether it's a bad day, <clears throat> week, month, whatever that is, where things haven't gone as we'd like them to, to have gone. It might be that a contract fell apart, could be something in our personal lives. And I encourage you to find some ways to get yourself back centered, um, whether it's a spiritual way, a physical going for a walk or something like that, just to bring yourself out of that because we don't wanna live in that, oh my gosh, everything is so hard, this fell apart, that fell apart. And the reason that I wanted to say a little bit about that is um, if you look at your business a year from now, where you have been doing the things that you've decided to start doing and following this program and, and following a lot of the things that we encourage you as being part of these offices, you have an expectation in those 12 months. And by ensuring that you have that buffer of whatever that is, being ahead of what you need to have done. Again, Tanya, Tanya and her and I had a conversation yesterday about she just listens to what I said. And then she tries to double it or triple it, um, which yay, can't wait to see what that looks like 12 months from now. And also um, what happens with that is if we do have a, a financial need, if we do have some responsibilities and some goals <clears throat> by ensuring that there is a buffer to make sure that you get there, wouldn't it be great to plan your business to where you have um, certain holidays or trips that are on your calendar that you want to that you want to go on and not have it either not happen because you don't have the finances or um, that you get accustomed to or being comfortable with not meeting those goals because two transactions fall apart in a week because that can happen. If you're in the business long enough, you will have that. Either it could be a day or it could be a, a month where just a number of things have happened. And many of us went through that with COVID where what we thought was going to either close or was moving along, stopped, disappeared, changed. So um, just keep those things in mind. And um, I want you to know that that's normal, that we do go through those, but plan for that plan for that something will happen and yet the plan is what is my correction what can i do to move still move the, the needle forward so is there another avenue that i have in my business plan that i can put some gas on that those types of those types of things so i may, may have rambled a little bit <clears throat> and yet i did want you to to know that it's normal top agents have bad days bad times Are we ready to get started? Just say yeah. Yeah, woohoo! Absolutely. <laughs> Thank, <Woo>! you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> Part of it is just coming up with those words coming out of your mouth, and you might, you know, it then your body kind of follows. That's my philosophy. Like sometimes just kind of like saying, yeah, let's do it. Let's make it happen. All right. So let's get. 
let's get going here, guys. And all right. <clears throat> so uh, after this, we have one more session together on Monday. Um, and the Monday session is going to be a lot about our tools and our offices and the connection of the things that we've learned throughout this entire course and how we can um, take those tools and kind of marry them. So we have the activities that we're doing and then we have the tools that being with Keller Williams can kind of get you there. How are you putting those two things together to ensure that you have everything that you need? You're the other mixture, you're the other ingredient to actually make it happen. So Keller Williams has the tools the training that you've just been going through is giving you the how to do it. Um, you're the magic ingredient and how do we get you there? So that being said, um, just as a reminder, these are the things that we're doing. Lead generating is your number one thing to be doing. If you are full-time 40, 50 hours a week as a real estate agent, and if you're half, if, if you're a part-time or you have other things, then half what I say. Um, or if you're Tanya, triple what I say. <laughs> She's an overachiever. Um, and this is, this is what you're doing. You are lead generating and then lead follow up. Those are the two things that are the most important things. So this is all in your materials, but they are a reminder. These are the things that you have to do as a real estate agent. Um, lead generate, um, practice your presentations, whether you're practicing them um, to get better at them and also going on presentations, previewing real estate, and then, of course, you're running it by marketing, showing houses, negotiating, transaction management. So if you are not great at paperwork, just know that you could either pay someone to do it or you do need to do it yourself. So transaction management, vendor management, setting your goals, making sure that you know how to get to what you need to get to, um, compliance and risk management, attending training and coaching and managing your money. What do we have? Um, people do not decide their future, they decide their habits and their habits decide their future. Many of you were on the call yesterday from um, the six personal perspectives and Heather went over some of, some of this. We can decide every single day what we are supposed to be doing. And we are gonna go over what a schedule would be like. Um, I'm wondering, and this is just for us to kind of talk about a little bit. Many of you are newer, been in the business for a couple of years or less, some of you a couple of weeks or less, and um, you're gonna be told no a lot. So if you're gonna be told no a lot, we're still going to need to do the things like lead generating and lead follow-up to still move that needle. So how we decide to do that every single day, even though we were to talk to 100 people this week, probably 95 of them are going to either say no or not now. The payoff for that is this is an occupation where you can do quite well financially. So that's the payoff, whether it's the thick skin or just getting accustomed to people saying no to you and also um, not now. So just not, not ready, not looking to sell my house right now. I have no need to sell my house right now. I wouldn't want to sell my house right now. I'm scared to sell my house right now. Markets change. They go up and down. So you need to figure that, that part out. Understand that you can sell houses in any type of a market. So th these are some of the things that we are going to really kind of understand um, as a day in the life of a real estate agent. Um, so let's just have a little bit of a discussion. Um, some of you may or may not be morning people. Is there anyone um, on the call that's like, a, you know what, I really just don't function very well until nine or 10 o'clock in the morning? Anybody? Yes, no, maybe. Anyone, anyone want to share about their, um, it's a, you know, it's a struggle in the morning, potentially. Yeah, 
Until I've had my coffee, for sure. <laughs> okay. So, so Brittany, do you mind if I just ask you just a little bit about about that? I mean, you're kind of a very yeah. Tip, yeah, you're kind of typical. So you have you have some children, you have a family. Um, so the coffee, um, how too? Because you have first of all, you have adorable children, and you're showing up to our classes you. regularly. You're constantly learning. You're very engaged. Um, how do you get yourself going in the in the morning? Do you mind sharing? Um, yeah. For, <laughs> well, I really don't have a choice because I have all these kids. <laughs> um, so you know, <laughs> they um, they kind of insist that I get up. But no, I get coffee and then um, I just kind of make my bed. That's usually I know I'm going to have a good day if I make my bed. Does that have um, anything to do with the military? Probably, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, but it's just kind of, you know, that's me starting on the right foot. And so once I do that, then it's like, okay, I already made the bed. So let me check my email or, you know, check to see what I have to get done today and make sure that I, I get to those things. And I'll usually write a list of like three objectives. I always try and keep it simple. Um, and I'll just base my day around those three things. And as long as I get those three things done at the end of the day, I know I'm good. I like that. Simple is good. Anyone else want to share what their morning can look like? Even if it's not, even if you're struggling with it. I mean, this is just real life. I'm the same way. I, I have to have coffee in the morning. I like to watch the news. I've been retired for a few years, so it's getting out of that habit of breaking that habit. It's still a little tough for me. Sure. But, you know, we, we started like, as soon as the news is over at nine, I, you know, we, we worked yesterday until six o'clock last night, you know, nine to six. We were at, so when that some, you know, I hear some people, they get up at five o'clock in the morning and, you know, they run an hour and they do all this, you know, go to the juice bar and all this. Uh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I, I mean, maybe eventually, eventually I will when I start getting more clients and more you know, <laughs> bigger in real estate. But right now it's just like, well, it's not really necessarily change my, my habits. I do the same thing. I get up in the morning and do all that stuff like that. So. Okay. Is there, um, is there anyone on here that maybe takes 15 minutes or more and uh, it might be that they journal or just have calmness, um, you know, sit and just have just a little bit of a get my thoughts in order anyone do something like that yeah i mean that's kind of what i'm doing when i do my uh to do today i mean i don't get any quiet time with it but. <laughs> <laughs> that'll come in about uh 30 years probably <laughs> maybe <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> oh, okay um, Kim added in the chat, um, starting on the right foot means a morning walk, um, but that, but that's been missing for the past few weeks um, with classes. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, and my walks provide the get the thoughts in order. Um, thank you for sharing that, Kim. And I know for myself, that's something that I do as well, even if it's as little as just five minutes or so of um, just like a couple of minutes, I might sit at the kitchen table and just kind of like think of what do I need to do for myself? Because there's always family and personal things that you might need to do. And what is my day going to look like? And I'm going to say for myself, I do have a spirituality that goes along with that. Whatever your belief system is, it's just a matter of, um, you know, what's, what's my soul need for the day? Um, I don't know if that sounds kind of hokey, but there's a little bit of that. It's like, what am I going to need today? And um, that's helpful for me. And I just wanted to share, um, or meaning I wanted you guys to share a little bit because it's reality. We have, there's kids, there's dogs, there are, well, pets. You might have other things than dogs. And, um, you know, I walk my dog as well. And that's just like that few minutes. That's the only thing I really can do during that time. It's hard for me to read emails during that time. And I like that. It's not very long in the mornings, but it is for that five to 10 minutes. Um, so thank you guys for sharing that part. 
Um, <clears throat> the schedule that you have in front of you, let me <clears throat> go over what this can look like as a busy real estate agent. And busy, when I say busy, probably not the best word. Maybe I should have said a purposeful real estate agent. Because sometimes we look at busy as being just busy and not necessarily accomplishing what I want, what I'm going over, what you can and should be <clears throat> accomplishing. So on the schedule, it starts off at eight o'clock in the morning. If you had a job where you were hired and you were making $150,000 or more, or even if you were at a job that was making $50,000, the motivation, um, or not the motivation, the time, the eight o'clock to 8.30, you probably would be getting to work somewhere before nine o'clock. I mean, I think that there was a time when people used to work nine to five. I don't know where that went, but most of my adult life, I've had to be at work before nine o'clock. And yet, so the schedule is talking about motivation building time. So the motivation is your personal. There's gotta be something that's important to you. You have to take care of yourself, whatever that looks like. Um, then there is the 8.30 to 11.30. This is referring to the lead generating and follow-up. So it's important for you to be lead generating and follow-up if you're full-time, five days a week. Is there anyone on the call? It's a little bit of a trick question. Is there anybody here who is thinking, ah, that's easy, I can totally do that? What do you think about that? Yeah. Yeah. And lead generating is a very broad term. Lead generating can be doing open houses. And while you may not do an open house at 8.30 in the morning, you could have um, open houses that you are doing during the week that can add to that three hours a day of lead generating. So open houses are one thing. Um, social media is one thing that you can be doing. Phone calls, text messages, private messages. Um, those are all things that can generate leads. There's also a lot of things that you can do online that are lead generating activities. Are you creating content for your social media, blogging, website that are go that's going to bring you pieces of business? So, I have seen those that are truly building a blogging type of platform that is bringing them leads. That could be what you do, and that could be your lead generating. You could be killing it on social media. That could be a lead generating activity. The phone calls, text messages, two-way conversations are what we're going to strip or be very purposeful about that being the best form of lead generating. So the more that you have two-way conversations, and that's also private messages, phone calls, text messages, any platform where you're having conversations with people, that's the, that's the strongest lead generating um, activity. And you can go from 10 of those every single day 10 two-way conversations about real estate to 20, and again, two-way conversations about real estate. By doing that, if you're doing that within that three-hour period of time and you're consistently building that real estate conversations and uh, you're building that database, that's going to bring you a great deal of success. It will happen even if you're at the 10 a day. So what that means is maybe you go to the grocery store, um, you go for walks in your neighborhood. Um, there's so many opportunities for you to be meeting people and adding them to your database. And if you focus on the, how can I get 10? And your number might be 20. Or Tanya's number is probably like 50 at this point, because she's doubling as time goes on doubles it doubling and tripping tripling then you're adding people to the database there's somebody in there whether it's on the weekly or monthly basis that's going to need a real estate agent so being very intentional about how can i get to the point that i'm having 10 two-way conversations 
or 20 or 30, whatever it is, how do I get to the point that I'm having those conversations to add people to my database? So ideally, those are the new people. Then the lead, then the follow up is the, I added someone to my database two months ago, I'm following up with them. Those are the people that are already there. So lead generating to get to where you're adding to the database, focus on 10 or more, and then also be following up with people that you have already added to your database. So again, going back to my schedule, if that's what I'm doing, take some time for, for a lunch, uh, run errands, or just have some, some time away from your um, real estate work type of um, uh, during, during the day. And now during lunch, I would suggest if you are newer and your business isn't where you need it to be, maybe your lunch is a 30 minute, you still need to, first of all, we need to eat, that's important. And also walk away from the, um, the desk. That's something that'll probably help you in the long run. So if I do my lunch for an hour, um, if I'm newer, I might be listening to a podcast. So I still might learn something during that time. And then in the afternoons from 12 to two or from 12.30 to 2.30, according to this, is I'm running the business. I'm marketing, I'm negotiating contracts, I'm attending classes. Most of the time, when it comes to our office, outside of this course, you're gonna find that we don't start classes or events until 11 o'clock or later. Because that will allow you to do your lead generating in the morning. It's not gonna take away from that. On occasion, we're gonna have a class that is um, all day or maybe to travel to get to a class, then you're gonna have to do that. Well, it's not about erasing that event or it's not about erasing your lead generating. You do have to then just move it. So it's not that the lead generating goes away for that week or for that day. When am I gonna put in my late lead generating? If I'm committed to this month, I'm going to have three transactions. 2.30 to 4.30 is the growing the business activity. Previewing homes, um, presentations. If you don't have a presentation to make to a client, you should be practicing and honing your skills as far as your presentation. And that's two hours a day. So if that's what you're doing, and then at 4.30, I stop those types of activities and look at what does it look like for tomorrow? What does my calendar look like that I can ensure that I have successes tomorrow? So that's the making my success list. So if I go back to working for another company where it's not my own business, real estate is our own business, you're probably going to the office or doing those, that work. You're there at the office from eight, maybe 8.30 in the morning, maybe eight. And then you are finishing your day at five or 5.30 so you should then have, you get home at whatever time you get home, and then you have your personal time, whether it's family time, um, personal for yourself, going and doing the things that you enjoy that makes us who we are. So this is really what your calendar can and should look like most days. Most of you that are on this call are doing real estate as a full-time business. Are you seeing anything in here that is a, uh, I'm gonna do laundry. Um, and I'm not taking away that we do have household things that we need to do. However, if you're working from home, it's very easy to get distracted. So is there anything on, the, on this list that has to do with your, the personal things that just as human beings we need to do? No, this is all work. So if I expect to get a check for, from helping a seller or a buyer, two or three times a month or five or six or 10 or 20 times a month, I'm probably not getting distracted with all the other things. I do those other things during the times that I'm not working. So these are, the, these are your key activities. So I'm going to take a little bit of time and we're going to go over Let's see here. I'm going to stop sharing this for just a moment and I'm going to show you a couple of things. All 
All right. Um, so obviously it's very important for you to be using your MLS system. That's what's here. Um, on top of that, we do have, here, let's actually go here. And um, I'm gonna show you where there's a couple of things that you may or may not know about. Those of you that are working with me, you have a file on Google Drive that has a lot of um, things that I've shared with you. It's like easy for you to go there and find scripts and all types of things. In addition to that, just about everything is here on our site. So remember, this is our homepage. There's a couple of people here um, who are not yet licensed. So I just wanna show you some stuff. So if I go to my um, homepage and then click on the education, it'll bring me here. If I use this search button, I'm able to come in here and look at, oops. Oh. See how I have, oh. <laughs> telling you these two, two screens. Okay, um, so if I were to type in something like a 411, I'm able to see my 411 here, downloaded, and it's going to bring me a 411. So to go along with the day in the life of a real estate agent, 411 um, is, oops, you know what, I'm going to use a different one. I actually don't particularly care for that one. Let's use... There we go. There we go. That should be it. So if I bring up my four my 411, what are the activities that I'm going to do on the daily basis as a real estate agent? First my computer decides to be slow. Here we go. It's just coming, it's just thinking. <clears throat> so you will see it momentarily. There we go. If I looked at this, and I had 36 transaction was 36 transactions were to be my goal this year. Whatever your number is, I'm going to use 36 because I've used it before, and this is just a reminder. If I have 36 transaction is my yearly goal. Okay, what do I need to do to make sure that I get to 36 transactions? If I'm 36 transactions, 36 divided by 12 is going to be three, right? That's three transactions a month. I wanna have three transactions a month. I need to have one transaction about every week and a day or two. So basically every um, eight days, eight to nine days, I need to have a transaction. So even if I were to say, this is basically you know, one transaction. I want one transaction to close. And this is my goal. What am I doing this week to make sure that 30, 45 days from now, I have a closing that week from the activities that I'm doing this week? So we are at the end, of, it's the last day of July. So with real estate, real estate business happens to be about three months out. Meaning if you meet somebody today, they probably are not gonna be putting in a contract today. That can happen and it does happen, but most of the time there's a little bit of time lapse. So if it's a buyer, I start working with them today. I met them today, however I met them. I start showing them properties this weekend, or maybe not this weekend, sometime next week. So this is the end of July. I start showing them properties in August, 
Maybe I have to show them properties three weekends before they find a house. I could do it in one day, that could happen. But most of the time you have to show them between um, probably five to 10 properties. Anyone on the call have kind of like an average of how many properties you need to show a buyer? Any thoughts on that? There is actually an average up until COVID. I, have, I can't give you an exact number for 2020, but before 2020. Anybody have an idea about how many properties oh, yeah. you know? Okay. Is it five? Five is a pretty, yeah, five is a pretty standard number. It is all local, by the way. I use five, um, and thank you for that. Five is pretty accurate for around here. And also nationally, I think it's more like seven as a total. <clears throat> and that can happen. And then you can also have someone that you show 20 properties to. Now, if somebody came to me, newer agent, and maybe you haven't done this a lot, and you're telling me that, oh my goodness, I've shown somebody 25 properties. Um, what are your thoughts about showing that many properties to someone? Is there any like red flags with that? Absolutely. I don't think they're really truly ready. Uh, maybe not ready. And also think about it this way. Um, I'd, I'd like for you as a real estate agent to think, what can I do? Let's, let's put it back to not playing a blame game. And yet, um, have I missed something? Always go to in, inward first. And is there something that I've missed? And it's, it may not be that, but I do want you mm -hmm. to think of, is there something, is there a question I haven't asked? Have I qualified them properly? Are they truly ready, willing, and able to purchase this month? So think right. of that. And to his point, um, they probably aren't ready. They may be in the shopping mode at that time. So it's probably going to be one or the other that I may not have qualified them. And then it goes back to if I have qualified them, have I been, have they been qualified, not necessarily financially, but have they been qualified that they are going to be purchasing this month? And the other thing is well, setting their up. We're new in the business. Sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> we're new in the business. I'll show them 50 houses. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, you can, I, you know, I have been guilty of having, having some clients that I showed way more houses than I probably should have because I just didn't, I, I was missing things. I was missing things from those relationships. And the reason that, that most of the time we're showing somebody five to 10 houses, and that's probably gonna be where you're gonna land is because you've done a lot of work ahead of time. You've had great conversations with them to understand what do they see as the perfect home? Have you asked them neighborhood questions? Are you aware of what's important to them on proximity to highways and um, what does the neighborhood itself look and feel like? What kind of things are in that neighborhood that are important to them? Are walking trails important? Is there necessary for them to have some amenities with an HOA, a pool, a, um, a, a rec center, gym, those types of things? Have we gone down the list of what a property can provide for them and are we super clear so that we don't show them a house this will happen and it's happened to me and it has happened to me even in the last year, let's say, where I have taken someone to a house and I may not have double checked to see, all right, how close is it to the highway? And are they gonna hear the highway noise? Totally guilty. I did this a couple of months ago. I showed, a, I mean, they're kind of friends of mine and I did, I showed them a property and I did not double check my map. I didn't. And it was like two blocks away from the highway and you could absolutely hear the highway noise. So those are kind of things that you can keep in mind. So have I done the activities that will ensure that I have a transaction that is going to close in 40, this week, did I do everything that I could possibly do to find a buyer or a seller that could potentially close 
in 45 to 60 days from now because basically that's how long our contracts are. Somebody writes a contract today, they're probably going to close between 30 and 60 days from now. So am I expecting a check in um, August? And this becomes the brutal truth because if you worked for someone, if you work for someone, you're going to have an, a need for um, to have a result for them. They're going to require that you're bringing income into that business. And if you don't, they're not going to float you and consistently pay you if you had a salary, if you didn't do what you needed to do and you didn't have the results that they needed to have the salary that you're looking for. And I encourage you, today is Friday, are you the type of employee, if you were working for someone else, because you're working for yourself, if you're working for someone else, would you have a job on Monday morning to go to? Anyone want to share on how they feel about the last week? Do you think that you'd have a job next week if you were working for somebody and making $150,000? Did you do everything you needed to do this week to ensure that you have a job on Monday morning? I did not, but I have an excuse. I had friends that came into town randomly, so. Well, and we can plan, we can plan for the unexpected as well. That goes, that goes back to, um, you know, if you did have a job that you had to report to, um, and we have some flexibility here as well. At the end of a year, yeah, we might have friends that stop by unexpectedly. We could have things that happen. Um, might have, you know, a couple of days that we didn't feel well and we didn't work. All of those things can totally happen. And yet, what about the previous week? Would we have had a job for, because we did everything that we were supposed to last um, the week before? So you can't ride that forever. Just like if, if any of you have had your own business or, or worked or managed other people. Yeah, if somebody gets sick, totally acceptable. But if somebody always has, and I know I've managed people before too, um, if there's always something that happens, and there's always the, uh, Brittany, I'll use it word excuse, and I wouldn't say friends coming into town is an excuse. And yet, <laughs> oh, yeah, if we had... <laughs> If we had um, a job to go to, there is some consistency that we're either going to have the results or we're going to have that things happen. And I don't want this to sound like Brittany did anything wrong. I'm just speaking in general. Yeah, no, I get it, definitely. Yeah, yeah that's, that's the way that it is. I worked in pharmaceuticals and we, you know, there were times that I had to, I hired people and I also let people go. And there were many, many times over the years of doing that, that I'd have someone who, you know, every week or every month, there was something that kept them from meeting what needed to be done as far as their job. So I just wanted to get real with you guys, because many of you got into this as a job because you enjoy doing this and also you're expecting some type of a financial reward from your efforts because you could be doing something else. This isn't the only job out there. Let's go back, back to that, or back to, um, um, back to this. Does that sound, oh, whoops, that's the wrong one. We go. Um, so what I was just talking about, does that sound kind of like, you know, like, wow, she's mean or I, I don't know. This is, that's the way that I think of it. And from a training perspective, I do want you to be really, really clear on the fact of if you've decided to do this and you have expectation from financial and also as a business coach, I'm here to make sure that those are the things that are tied to what you're your reasons for doing this are. And we can either have excuses or we can have results. Can't have both. Yeah, I do like. 
Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, I agree with you. I don't think that sounded mean at all. I think it was realistic. <laughs> um, unfortunately, my biggest problem has been that um, since this happened, I've mm -hmm. been, I need to burn my boat, so to speak, with my previous job. I'm working up to 112 hours a week, literally. Um, and you're on this call just about every day. And, and I am. <laughs> and, and I fit it in. And that's why I have just my picture up because I can't, I was telling Dawn when I met Dawn and Bobby at the open house, that's why I do that because I am working. <laughs> right. Uh, so healthcare is something that I've done for so many years. And that's why I, you know, when I went into, I've always wanted to be in real estate, but mm -hmm having it here during this interesting time we're in, um, I kind of have, you know, the bird in the hand thing, you know what I'm saying? I so agree. it's messing me up <laughs> and, <laughs> and I'm trying to scale back. Um, I'm trying to go to two days a week instead of seven. So sure. after Monday, that will be the case, but and it's it's very frustrating because if that's what I want to do, I want to lead Jen and I want to get out there and I want to do what I want to do. This is what I want to sure. do. But the paycheck, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so I I absolutely am very passionate about real estate. I mean, I have I, I just love it and it's something that I've wanted to do since I lived up north, but never sure. was able to. So it is you, it's what you're saying is absolutely true that you have to show up just as if you're showing up to a job because it is a job. It just happens to be that it's also your business. Yeah. And we have to find a way, whatever that means for each of us to operate our business as best we can for ourselves and for the people that, you know, we're having to show up for whatever our big why is, that's what we need to be doing. And I'm, I'm very guilty of not doing one tenth of what I need to do right now because I've, I'm trying to do other things and it's, it's not a good thing to do. So yeah. we just all have to do that. Well, and, and we do. And um, to your point, you're, you're not alone um, that, uh, I mean, your, your circumstances are unique and yet you're not alone in that, we have people that are on the call that may be doing this part time, or may have um, maybe maybe there is only an hour to two or three hours a day, or throughout the week you can only put in about ten hours to real estate. And whatever that is, be committed to that ten hours every week that you're going to do what you need to do to move the needle on your real estate business. So if it's that little bit amount of time toward to uh this is my main um thing to do every week i am a real estate agent i'm working 40 50 60 hours whatever that is and there's not judgment around that but if i've decided that i'm going to be a real estate agent for the next um for this week and i'm going to spend, spend 10 hours and i'm going to be super committed and make sure that i do everything that i can to get to the point that I have whatever that success is that I am dictating to that 10 hours, that I make sure that that happens. That's all, that's all that it is, is being committed to what that looks like. I'm in a different position as an agent myself personally today than I was as being a single parent. I was a single parent, it was all on me. You know, now, thank goodness, knock on wood, I have a child who's old enough to pay his own way um, and um, the combined family that we have, we're able to do things that I couldn't do as a single parent. And so I might have that, okay, in the evening, whatever that time is, let's say it's by six o'clock in the evening, the rest of the evening, for the most part, is going to be committed to my family. And that's what I may have done. Now, there have been other times to where all right, I have to spend a lot of time Saturdays and Sundays and wake up earlier than I'd like to wake up to make sure that I do what I need to do to then still have family time with my son, those types of things. Um, 
but I was committed to moving the needle to whatever that, that level was to get there. And that's what I'm encouraging you to do, being committed. We can easily go down a rabbit hole. It is super easy to be a professional student as a real estate agent, to be a professional about finding the new shiny object that's gonna get me to where I wanna go faster. Um, they're all out there. You can spend all day online on finding out how you can be a real estate agent, make millions and millions of dollars and spend little time and little effort. Those things are out there. Are any of them real? No, they're not. It goes back to this 80-20 um, principle, what we we're talking about um, on the previous slides as far as your schedule. So we talked about this yesterday, if you were on the call with Heather, about the 80-20 um, the, um, principle and ensuring that you do what needs to be done. Your big rock as a real estate agent and even more intent, intensified as a newer agent is to be um, lead generating. That is the big rock because if you don't have a lead, you don't have any business. You might be lead generating for a half an hour every day. That at least is gonna move the needle. If you're purposeful, I'm telling you, if you're purposeful for 30 minutes and we do it over and over again in classes, if you ever taken bold, They'll give you like 30 minutes to go and make some phone calls or send some text messages, things like that. If you just do that, that will start to move the needle. It may take a little bit more time than a person spending three hours a day. I'm gonna tell you start with today and spend 30 minutes since like nothing else is gonna get in the way. I'm going to use text messages, private messages, phone calls, whatever I need to do to have a what however brief conversation with someone about real estate there's someone there even if you're calling your your friend your best friends your family and, and you know begging i'm gonna say begging begging them isn't there somebody in your world that needs to buy or sell because there probably is probably is and if i go back to what i talked about before is in August, it's important for me to have a written contract that I don't yet have. Maybe I have one contract already and my commitment is to get to two contracts in the month of August. Maybe my um, goal is to have um, two more contracts next month. Maybe I'm at, I'm at zero now. I could be at five now and I'm committed to having two more because I want to have an amazing Christmas. Because that's a good that's a good question. If you celebrate during the month of December any holiday that involves gifts or trips or something, trips are kind of weird right now. And yet, whatever your life is going to be like by the end of the year, we're in August. We've got all of August, September, October, November. That's four months. Do we have a goal? to have something happen by the end of the year. And if we do, today it's only, what time is it? It's almost 10 o'clock in the morning. You can spend from 10 o'clock in the morning until five o'clock this afternoon. And if you're super purposeful about that and go hunting for a piece of business in every avenue that you could explore, there's probably somebody that you could find today that is going to need a, a need to buy or sell or invest? Probably. Anybody think that that's possible? Oh, that's absolutely possible, for sure. Yeah, there is, there is. And I mean, you know, Jennifer, I'm just, I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I feel like a slacker because here she is, she's working 100 hours plus a week and she still showed up for this phone call. Anybody, can, can anybody beat that? Oh, I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> please understand, I didn't bring that up to compete with that. I just, I feel very, very, very badly <laughs> right now because <laughs> I, I, this is what I've wanted for so many years and I finally started and I thought I was done with this position, um, but I, I guess maybe, and I'm not a fearful person. I like to even fly airplanes. 
I, I'm not a fearful person, but I kind of, I guess I opted a little bit in fear because, you know, taking the, I took an easier route. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I feel like uh, I've taken a little bit of an easier route because I'm getting that, I'm getting that paycheck. It's a little more predictable. I'm sure. a single woman with a mortgage. So, you know, I'm trying to balance both, but like, I may not be lead generating at the moment, but I am working on my marketing. I am attending whatever, yeah. you know, classes I can attend while I can work. I'm trying to figure out how to juggle it all, but I do feel I, I what you're saying is so valid and so true. And I know that that's why I'm scaling back to two days a week so that I can, you know, really go for it. And and, but it's and not easy. <laughs> yeah. Well, and and I uh, I appreciate it's never worth doing is easy. I know that. So. Well, that's that's very true. And I do appreciate you sharing. And I'm I'm just trying to kind of have some stern conversations with people because sometimes that is part of it. And and I've done it too. I've gone to a class or sat in with something saying, Oh yeah, this is amazing, this is fantastic, and this is all great. And um, I appreciate that Jennifer is having conversations with us because her circumstances are her circumstances. And I get it. Hey, money is important. We have mortgages. We have food to, to buy. You know, at a certain point, you need your food, shelter. Um, and that's, so she's making, her, co her commitment may be that she's getting some of this training. And it might be that you have other things in your life. You have, um, a, you know, family need that takes you away from being the real estate agent that you want to from the, how much time you have, all of those things. We all have, we all have something, but I'm encouraging you to hear somebody that's trying to move that needle because you may be in a similar situation to where it's like, well, how am I going to make all this work? And those are the choices that we make and be okay with that choice. My job is, if I'm spending two hours with you though, is you've, you've allowed me to spend this time with you and I want you to get to the point or, or get to the um, level that you're looking to get to because that's what my job is. That's what you signed up for by turning on your computer to watch me um, this morning. And, um, you know, Jennifer has that, ex that example. Um, I, I always go back to my, um, my best friend was pregnant with her third child, a full-time teacher and getting her master's degree all at the same time, all of that at the same time. And the only time, the only thing that I had to worry about at that time, I actually wasn't, was not a parent at that moment. I just had a job to go to. I had a job to go to that I worked my 40, 50 hours a week, and then I didn't have anything else I had to worry about, basically. And I compared myself to her. And that's not necessarily what we're, what we're looking at, but I want you to understand that there's the moving the needle, pulling ourselves forward in real estate, and making sure that we're very um, committed to the efforts. So the 80-20, goes back to what those big rocks are. And I truly want you to understand um, that it's all about the um, activities that you are doing as a real estate agent. And in this particular conversation um, about the 80-20 principle, it's always gonna go back to your lead generating and follow up, those two things, because you can lead generate, if you do not follow up, you might as well have wasted your time with your lead generating. So setting your objectives. And again, this class is all about a, um, the life of a real estate agent. So if I'm gonna set my object objectives, translate your weekly goals into your daily objectives. So going back to that 411, so make sure that this populates. Oh, yay. Okay. By the end of this course, I'll totally know how to use Zoom properly. Uh, with my weekly activities, I talked about the fact that my weekly goal was to have one, in this instance, each one of these things, it's your 
goals, not my goals. I'm using this as your example. In Jennifer's um, example, it might be that she, this week was just honestly just getting through this, this course. It could be that. You could be um, looking at this week, my weekly goal for this week is to learn how to be a successful real estate agent. That's one of my, um, my um, five things that I'm going to do on the weekly basis. I'm going to hone my skills. So I could have, um, let's say that I have, um, and depending on where you are in this, in, in this journey as a real estate agent, you might have that on the weekly basis, where you are today, it might be that you're spending two hours. Maybe you're spending two hours a day. You might be someone who is not yet licensed and therefore you're spending, learning how to be a real estate agent, you're spending four hours a day. You also could have it that as a, a successful agent, you've been in the business for a few years and you're just gonna spend five hours a week total at honing your skills because that never stops. I was on the call yesterday. Um, that was the six personal perspectives with many of you. I've taken that class many times and I still was there for a majority of it because I have never heard Heather teach it before. And I need to be reminded, I need to go through these classes regularly. And I'm a person who is training others. So, so skill set, building it, important. If I want to have three transactions on the monthly basis, what else can I do on the weekly basis to ensure that I'm going to have three transactions this month and also have 36 transactions a year? Anybody want to share what would be something that I could do on the weekly basis that's very purposeful for me to be a real estate um, agent who has three transactions in a month? What's a weekly goal? Anybody want to add anything? Come up with something. Just making our lead generation phone calls a couple hours a day would, would certainly get us in that, on the trajectory for that. Probably. So let's say if I were going along with a three transactions, <clears throat> excuse me, three transactions a week, uh, what's what's realistic to be the, the lead generating part, not the lead follow-up, but the lead generating? What do we think? I think most of you on this call are newer, probably having three transactions or less on the monthly basis. So what's, what's a good number on the daily basis to be lead generating? How many hours? Somebody throw something out. Two hours. Did you say two? Yeah. Okay. Oh, All right. Okay. Now, a couple of you have been speaking up. And so let's say that we wanted to have three transactions to, that we either have listings or buyer contracts in the month of August. Because this kind of plan, this, this ended up being great that here it is, we're at the end of the month. So we can really kind of plan our August, can't we? So if we're going to plan the next month and we're going to lead generate two hours daily, if we lead generate five, uh, five days a week, that would be 10 hours of lead generating where we are hunting for a piece of business. We spent 10 hours where we were super focused, having, having real estate conversations two hours every day Think we could have have a couple of transactions, but you, you can say whatever you feel about that. I don't want it to be. It's not about me. It's about you guys. Is that realistic? I think it's very realistic. Okay, it's also hard. It, it's yes, realistic it is. and hard. <laughs> but 
again, I mean, we have to, we have to find the time somehow. I mean, I was working with one seller and two buyers, unfortunately both fell through, but still I was able to get them, you know, even while doing this. So it's, <laughs> it's, gotta, be, it's, it's, it's gotta be doable. Um, <laughs> and you know, you, know, you bring maybe, up a maybe, yeah. But yeah. you're bringing up the, the validity of you did have that happen and you could do it again. You might have to do it a different well, way. Well, I will do it for and you sure. Will do it again. There's no doubt for sure. Exactly. exactly. So if you're someone who hasn't had that happen, at least you're hearing, this is somebody who's actually on the call. It's not just me giving you, you know, all these scenarios that happen, but she, ha she has it happen. I know from people that I'm working with, I've had them who meet somebody at an open house a couple of weeks ago, and now they're starting to take them out because they're pre-qualified. Um, I have another person, um, I don't know if he's on the call at the moment, and a couple of things this past week have started to rise to the um, surface as being people that taking out, showing clients homes this week, listings, those things are starting to happen with someone who may be new to the industry a couple of months ago. So the activities, while they don't always show up that week, they do show up in the long run typically. So, all right, so if I'm building out this week, my goal is to have one transaction. Oh, you know what, let me write it as a one transaction. I'm going to spend two hours a day building my skills. And that can look like uh, practicing my presentation, taking a class, um, utilizing command to build ads. There's, there's all types of things. I mean, you know, that typically when you're learning how to do something at the same time or shortly after you learn how to do it and then you're actually doing it and that activity is what's going to bring us business. So let's have one more thing that we make sure that I'm committed to having two hours a day that I'm going to learn and build a skill that is towards my business. I have two hours a day that I'm going to lead generate. You know what? Let me add because I don't want anybody to forget. Okay, uh, lead gen and then follow. Up. I'm going to say just for you guys, one hour of um, there we go. because you do need to be doing some lead follow up so that just from that, most of us look at a full time job as working eight hours a day. If I'm working eight hours a day. I'm lead generating for two. I'm lead follow up for one and I'm um, skill building for two hours a day. So that's practicing presentations, building our presentations, as well as taking classes, all that. That's five hours a day. If I'm an eight hour plus full-time real estate agent, I have three hours that are left. What else can I be doing? Again, committed to having three transactions a month. I think you have to spend some time on marketing, you know, not just the, you know, social doing things for social media, making videos, graphics, or having someone else do that or whatever. But marketing is important part of that as well. Okay. How about if I, I'm going to say marketing self as well as marketing listings. Yes. Just to be clear. Um, so that everybody kind of follows it and let me, add to that piece. So just like what she, those examples that she gave, perfect. She's got a bunch of things there. And um, you can be marketing other people's listings to generate business for you. So keep that in mind. You can be advertising a listing that doesn't have to be your listing. I have seen some examples of sending out emails or text messages to people that are in their world um, 
on the regular basis and let's say you build out your monthly marketing communication so again text messages emails social media and some of them are kind of the same that you're just taking in and using a different platform for it so if, if i were talking about the office that i'm in right now the liquid ranch office we might have maybe we got i don't know five luxury or five move up buyer type of listings this week so i might build out a plan for my communication on the weekly basis and you can have you can be building them and they don't necessarily go out at that moment but i can be building it and on the first week of the month i send out something that's really cool investment opportunities so these are the fixer uppers the handyman specials um, the lower price point that goes out and communicates that right so that could be something that i'm doing week two maybe i do a um a market update of what happened the previous month because you do want to have that late enough in the month because some of the reports and stuff that we get don't actually populate until about the 10th of the next month out. So I might have a, what happened last month? So maybe I am indicating that uh, prices held firm, um, days on market are just insane. If you're looking for a three bedroom um, or four bedroom, three bath, home with a pool in this liquid ranch area they are selling i don't know 20 days which is down from 60 days last year this time there's a story to be told and the report will tell you that you just got to start learning how to look for that our mls system actually populates something if you haven't seen it it comes up as a a read this item and look at that and look did it go up did it go down tell a story so whether or not you have a client to be marketing a listing that you have there is something to be marketing so you can market yourself that you're a knowledge holder of real estate and then you can also be a person who is marketing just real estate as a whole that there's this really cool property So here are just, um, those are, there are four things. One, two, three, yeah, four, can't even count. Let's come up with one more thing that I can be committed to. There's probably one thing, and maybe it's something that only takes 10 minutes. Maybe it's a half an hour or something. Give me an idea. Be creative, maybe be creative. Something I can do for like an, an hour to a half an hour a day. Walking the community. Okay. So is it okay I, if I say maybe, oh, go ahead. Somebody was just popping in. I uh, just started, haven't fully done it yet. But I, just took, I took a picture of a house down the block from the house and the grass is overgrown a little bit and so i did some property uh search on it and the people live in massachusetts so i'm gonna take a picture let them know about their property you know see you know i don't know if they want to sell it or you know but just give them a heads up like their property's doing all right i'm gonna wait for the this hurricane to pass and let them know hey this this is you know property is okay hopefully and you know, just put my business cards in there and stuff like that. And give them, I think we're giving them like three ideas. Like yeah, tips. give them like three ideas for tips about. Like the, the post office. The post thing. office where you can take, you can see what's coming in the mail that day. I don't know if you've seen that. Tell, tell me what you mean by that. I don't follow. The post office, the post, the post office has a, a system where you sign up for it on, through their website. And you can act, they'll send you an email of every day of all the and all the letters you're, you're getting that day in the all mail. The, all the mail that you're getting that day? Yes. Yeah. It's pretty, it's, we, we use it now. It's pretty cool. Really Wait nice. So is this for, but 
you're supposed to be the owner of that property. Is that right? Or you don't have yes. to be? Use that. Oh, okay. So let them know. Just give them tips, like neighborhood tips. And like uh, some con different contractors in the area and, you know, people that we use. Like just just to try to, I don't know. Like maybe if their lawn's not maintained, maintain, maybe we could give them a refer, you know, tell them the lawn service that we're using and, you know, they're doing a good job or and maybe the lawn person that they're using is not cutting their, their grass on a normal basis. So just so, some tips. So, so tips. Okay. Um, now I follow because I, I was lost for just a moment. And um, so you're – you're reaching out to them to become a resource, a local yes. resource for a property that they own. We have no idea what they're doing with the property, but it's sitting there and the grass is growing and nobody's cutting it, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, we're going to try. It's a lot of investigation and a lot of looking into and a lot to put together, but we're going to try to maybe dredge, maybe do like a handful of them to see how it's working. Agreed. Agreed. And um, so I'll speak to a little bit of this and you tell me if this is what you're kind of thinking or if, it, if I'm not in, in line with it. So we do have vacant properties that are, that we know of that we're either driving past, might be in our community, there's something happening. And I have a similar one across, across the street that has, has that type of a issue. Um, mm -hmm. You know, nobody's there and yet they're getting it mowed once in a while and they haven't yet responded to me and yet this is something that you can do. So um, vacant property, you're driving by it. You're seeing that obviously it's the lawn is not being mowed and you have yet to see a, a car in the driveway. Or if there is a car in the driveway, it looks like it's never moving. So it's probably yeah. someone who doesn't live there full time at least. Mm -hmm. So if that is the case, um, you then can reach out to them. Typically, it's a little bit of a challenge to find a phone number. So this might be something that you mail out to them, but for the most part, you can do that with an inexpensive envelope, paper, stamp. You're talking about 75 cents probably. Um, so I would encourage you to have a form type of letter. You're mm. gonna have local vendors. So as you collect your local vendors, and we in our offices have a vendor list that you can literally print it out. So if you're in the mm. Lakewood Ranch office or Lakewood Ranch area, you could utilize that, print it out, have a letter, says I'm a local real estate agent, I pass by this house every day, I'm thinking or I'm seeing that, you know, the lawn, you know, um, could use some TLC. You want to be delicate because some people have a variety of reasons as to why that's happening. Um, yeah. So, you know, the, I could see that, you know, it might need, the house might need a little um, TLC, lawn mode, et cetera, um, you may be thinking that now is the time to sell, given that prices are up 5% from last year this time, or mm. houses are selling in two weeks in our neighborhood, those types of things. So you're going to need to know what that is. So those are your, your form letter is basically like, I've noticed your home it's not going to sound like this and yet i've noticed your home is vacant and needs some tlc yeah. warm it up a little bit but basically that's what you're doing then you might have three bullet points saying you know here are some ideas here's what's happening you know here's the market what's happening in the market be honest about that um you may just need some resources and i'd be happy to you know give me a phone call and i can help you with that okay um, great thank you yeah those the, so all of those things and then of course at the end you know, of course, I'm a local real estate agent. I live in the community or I live in the area. And if you happen to want to just see what the market is like, we could definitely put it for sale. And um, and maybe that would be the best thing. I mean, it's sitting here vacant. You're paying taxes. You're doing all these things. Why? I mean, yeah. It, and that's again, right. that's not how the how that's not the words that you're going to use. But basically, those mm -hmm. are the things that you're coming, that's, those are the topics mm -hmm. right, that, cover in the letter. I mean, so far I've seen like, you know, the taxes are up to date. And so it was, if and it, that's it was, easy. yeah, that's easy to see. Um, yeah. 
So I didn't realize how easy. <laughs> yeah, like once you build your form letter, the, the advantage of having, you should have some kind of a form letter mm -hmm. for expires, for sale by owners, vacant properties, investment properties. So you might end up that you have like basically like 10 form letters and you could just search online and find an example, tweak it, make it yeah. your own. Okay. And that way when you're driving around, you see a house, you take a picture of it, make a note of the address, and then you can go home and within five minutes or 10 minutes, you could potentially have something that you then send out the next day. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so we had a couple, uh, Kim is making uh, comments about researching the tools, tools on Keller Williams U and command research groups to join community service, visit communities with new construction. So those are good ideas as well. So I'm going to put down both of these things. So, um, um, how could I say that? Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to write this and yet yeah, you could have it however you want to write it. Um, drive around and be aware. Um, okay. You can write it however you want if you're making notes, but basically it's just being aware of what's going on in your community and is there a possible um, seller or buyer that you could help with that. And then of course, um, Kim was saying, um, um, visit you so those are some of the things that she mentioned um i was not vesting i'm oh, sorry about that i do need to wear my glasses more and would be helpful if I could spell as well. Um, so these are some of the things that you could do. So if you were to look at on the weekly basis, I'm going to spend five hours doing the meat and potatoes of my business. I'm going to um, do skill build, skills building for two hours a day. Part of the skills building might be that I'm on KW University doing some investigating, kind of learning um, um, from other people. There's videos out there. There's all kinds of content that you could be um, adding into that. So skills building. Um, I'm lead generating for two hours a day and one hour I'm lead follow up. So the lead generating. Um, so what Bobby was talking about, um, he mentioned um, that he's um, contacting the possible sellers that are in the neighborhood. So that is a lead generating activity. So you can add that to that two hour period of time, walking the neighborhood. I think that Brittany mentioned, you know, walking your neighborhood or going to the community pool and making sure for 30 minutes, um, anyone is there that you're just meeting and greeting, greeting them and become and being friendly. That could be part of your lead generating too. going to networking events. That's whether they're virtual or in person, that is a lead generating event. So, Let's use this as an example. Maybe there is a, even if it's online, there's a networking thing that you do in the morning. You know, it's a group of business people in the area where you exchange referrals. There's lots of organizations that do that. You can build your own. You could go and look for on the weekly base, or I'm sorry, on the monthly basis, I'm gonna meet once a month with a group of people. I'm looking for 10 people. And these are 10 business people that wanna grow their business. And we're gonna help each other build that business. So I'm the real estate agent because I started the business. I mean, I started the networking group. Great. I'm a real estate agent. So I got that, that um, column filled. I then find someone who is uh, potentially, it's a lender because those are easy to find. So it's a lender. I then find somebody who's in the construction business to maybe help with um, the service industry, um, improving the home, you know, updating the home, um, plumbing, electrical, all those types of things. Um, maybe there's someone who has a small business, uh, could be like a restaurant or something. How can you promote that restaurant? So find 10 people and then meet with them once a month. It might be that it could be young um, professionals, could be a women's group, 
could be um, a group of people that just love to, I don't know, maybe you're, you're, you fish or you golf or you um, um, go to a, <clears throat> some type of an, a, a gym and then you just meet after. It's like, okay, let's just talk about how we can grow each other's business and let's meet. Typically it's meeting either a happy hour or a lunch or a breakfast. And then you do your follow-up with those people as well. So if you can find 10 people in a networking event and where the obligation that you have is that once a month, you're all gonna come and out of the group of 10, each one of you will have at least one or maybe it's the obligation is to have three referrals. That would be a pretty cool group, right? And there's probably people that you know that would be part of that group. There's professional groups that are out there that do it that you have to pay on the monthly basis to be part of their group. Anybody here um, been to BNI? Business, ne Business Networking International, I think it's called. Anybody know about that group? Nobody? I know of it. It's very expensive to be part of it. It is. It's, yeah. it's so, I mean, there's so many free places that you can go to and maybe not necessarily go to physically right now, but virtually. And those are, Thanks. those are things that I'm looking at too, because I know that's a very big deal. And that was something I wanted to do in, in the onset in March is going to all these network function, networking functions. Exactly. So, so now I just have to figure out what, what they are that's going to be the best for me virtually right now. And, and, then, and they are total, they're absolutely out there. I mean, I, I see some, just in my neighborhood, on my neighborhood page, I've had um, people that are looking for play dates. I've had, there's, there's somebody that um, did a virtual happy hour for the community. It, it can be any, so it's, it's absolutely doable. And the thing is, so what if you only get one taker? So what if you organize something and it's virtual and you get one person who wants to, to be part of that? All right, well that month, maybe I get one person. So maybe I can have a really good relationship with a person who's gonna refer me business. And this month I got one person. Next month, maybe it gets a little bit better. Those types of things, whether it's a networking event, a play group, because you have kids that need to, you know, um, meet new, meet other kids. Um, it might be that you love to do something and whatever it is that you love to do. Start a, start a group or join a group that does that. There's lots of things. I know, um, you know, bike riding or, you know, biking, I don't know if that's the right term for it. Um, there's people that do that. There's all types of things. There's walking groups. There's um, dog parks. Lots of things that you can do. My point with this is if I'm committed to making sure on the weekly basis, I am going to have 10 hours, two hours every day of skills building, two hours every day of lead generating, 10 hours total, follow up one hour daily. That's five hours of that. I'm going to market um, myself as well as listings, and that's going to be for an hour a day or a half an hour a day. And I'm going to, um, you know, walk the neighborhoods to learn about real estate, whatever it is. Going to do that type of a thing, and or I might drive around, and or I might be visiting new construction. Those are types of things that are all real estate related. And by walking a neighborhood, then don't I have something to talk about? Um, or if, if I'm walking the neighborhood and there's a house that looks like it's vacant and I am talking to my neighbors and I'm consistently reminding them, or at least I do a little investigating. It's like, yes, I sent, sent a letter because I knew that they needed a little bit of help. I um, gave them some names of a um, lawn care company and I found out that they actually are planning on moving down in about six months. It's like, then you have something to talk to your neighbors about. There's all these ways that it all intertwines. And then also by doing this over and over again, you then have a story as well as communication to deliver to 
the other people in your world. So I found out about the house that is, you know, six months from now, or they're going through probate right now, maybe. And a few months from now, it will be able to be sold. Well, at my networking event, maybe there's somebody that's looking for something in that neighborhood. If they're looking for something in that neighborhood. You can say, well, I might actually have something. Um, I'll know more in a couple of months. And I'll make sure that as soon as, as, soon as um, I know more, uh, I'll be able to share whatever I'm able to share. You don't know what the end outcome's gonna be. It might be that you bring a buyer. It might be this your listing, who knows? They just all flow. So there's a bunch of things that you can do. And if you're doing that every single week and ultimately everything that I do, if I look back one week from now, so today is Friday. So let's say I did all of these things this past week. And at the end of the day on Friday, I'm looking at it and I'm saying, yes, I have one person who I have written a contract with. Yay, that checks off that I am to the point that I might have one of those three transactions for that month. So that's telling me I just need to do the same thing over here and the same thing over here and the same thing over here. Now, if I did this week and I did not get to the point that I have one transaction, that's telling me that my activities, I need to be accountable for my activities. Am I still moving that needle to where I'm anticipating those that week that I did, that there are some things that are percolating that I should actually still end up with a contract? May not have happened that week, but I expect to write a contract in the next day or two. Then I still might be accountable to this three transactions Could be, right? So I'm still accountable to what I did and what I did is actually working. Does that explain how to really work with the goal setting and get to the nitty gritty and understand three months from now, if this is what I did today, I should be to the point that I am going to have that one transaction that three transactions um, three months from now. That kind of a little bit clear, clear as mud, as they say. Crystal clear. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Thank you. Let's go, let's carry on. And here we go. So we wanna make sure that my objectives are timely, identifiable, purposeful, metric driven and attainable. So we kind of went through that when we just went through that exercise of that 411. So that paper that we just went through is called a 411. In some ways it probably should be a 114 because you've got your one big goal, the number of transactions or the dollar amount. That could, it just needs to be attainable. So if I have that as my one thing that I wanna happen this year, the next section is the next one is what am I doing every single month? So the month of August, what am I going to be accountable to? Is it a dollar figure? Is it a transaction number? It's like if I want to have 36 transactions in the next 12 months, then most likely I need to have that I have three transactions next month. So 36 in a year, three in a month. So in the month of August, if I want to have written three transactions, then what am I doing every single week? Every day within the week. So that's what all of this is about. It's just setting those objectives and making sure that we stick to it. Also, if you've never done this before, if you haven't been purposeful about your real estate career, understand 
that you could go three, four, five weeks and not have that first transaction written. You need to be moving towards that, that you have clients that you're taking out to see properties, that you're going on listing appointments and knowing that they're all in your pipeline. And then you can start to look at, well, what does my pipeline look like? So let's, let's go over, anyone have like any thoughts about what we've been talking about right now? Like, what do you think, what do you think in your next week? What, what do you think in next August? Anybody have a goal for August? Something? Come on, there's something. It, go ahead. I don't know. My biggest goal for August is to just have myself be on the schedule that I want so that I can do exactly like you said with the days and know that I can set the appointments and actually be able to be at the appointments. So it may seem like a silly goal, but right now that's where I'm at. And, and I hope to, for August, at least end up with, you know, four solid leads that lead to contracts. Okay. Uh, either buyer or seller. So that's my, for August. For, I biggest part of it is just being able to get that schedule where I need it so that I yeah. can perform the objectives that I have. Okay. For me. That's not, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I think, I mean, this being purposeful about it, you have uh, an idea of what you want it to look like. Um, that, absolutely. So, um, so imagine, this is something that was helpful for me and you'll have to tell me how you feel about it too. So if I wanna, Let's do Oops. if I can. Oh, I lost it again. There we go. Okay, this is what this is something that um, was helpful for me. So I know obviously here's a calendar. Woohoo! Yay, there's a calendar. Um, Oh, and also Kim said, one of my main goals for August is to pass my real estate exam. Yes, let's do that. <laughs> That's a good one. Um, and then the other Kim said, two buyers that identify homes and go under contract. Very good. Um, so those are, those are good. That's attainable. That's very clear. Knowing what, knowing what I want to have happen. So as you go on, and August might be the first time that you do that, do this. You might have had someone in the last couple of weeks that you've met, maybe it was an open house, maybe you referred a client from a friend that says, oh, this person is looking at buying, this person's looking at selling in the near future. And you've had a conversation with them. I want you to get accustomed to, if I wanna have 36 transactions in the next 12 months, again, whatever your number is, the number is, is not the, the point of this. Whatever that number is, and you've identified that you need to have Every two months, you need to have one transaction. Every month, you need to have three transactions, whatever that is. I want you to get accustomed to looking at the calendar and saying, okay, I have found, I have my client, meaning this is someone that you have had a consultation, whether it's in-person or online consultation with someone, and you are super clear and you are as confident as you can be that you would bet money on it, that this person is going to work with you. So you have that person, you're considering them, they are a client of yours. And they're telling you in August, so in August, um, they are going to start looking at property and they are ready, willing, and able to buy. Great. So that person, let's say that person's name is Mary. Mary is ready. Great. Mary is in August. Let's say you've met some other people and 
you know, Joe is an October seller. Um, um, Bill is a buyer in November because um, he's going through pre-approvals and needs to pay off a couple of things. So he's a little bit down the road. That's three clients that you can identify and put them into your pipeline to know these are the people that I have for those months. Now, I still am responsible for following up with them, making sure that I am their real estate agent of um, choice, and then I'm not going to lose them. And then I also have enough that even though I have these, what if something changes? What if Bill, instead of being a seller in November, I forgot what I said he was, so Bill's a, a seller in November, let's say something happens that he moves it to March of next year. Well, do I have enough people in my pipeline that even if that happens, maybe March is a much bigger month, but do I still have enough business happening in the other months to make up for it? And what happens is, and this is something for myself that was super helpful, and whether you have it written down or you have it in command, um, I liked having it on um, my desk um, to where I could either just see it or even if it was on the wall, that I knew these are my pipeline people for the next year, if it's that far out, so that I don't forget about them. Because the because Bill, if Bill has told me that he's gonna be a seller in November and then he moves it out to March, I still need to be following up with him. And wouldn't it be great for you to look at your calendar over the next 12 months and have it actually pretty full and know, all right, I have three or four people that my expectation is that they're gonna be um, closing in this month, this month. So I know I have five that are in March. I have one that's in January. I have what, whatever your goal is. And if I don't have whatever that number is supposed to be in each one of those months, I need to be working towards that. So 90 days out, how many closings are you expecting to have in November and December? Because the, day, the things that you're doing today, the things that you're doing this coming month will dictate the business that you have three months from now. And if you don't have somebody that you're working with today, then you don't have a closing happening in three months, two months. Got to go find them. So you will hear us in classes say things like, if you ever hear them, and hopefully I will, um, in a good way, pop into your head. If you hear us in a class and we say, what day is it? You will probably hear, some people might say, July 31st. And then once in a while, you're going to hear somebody say, October 31st. The October 31st answer is probably what that instructor is referring to because whatever you have done up until now is what's dictating your future business in the next three months. All right, guys, tell me what you're thinking. I feel like I talked for quite a while. I think that's a really good way to look at it. I mean, it, it, that's very uh, profound, actually. Oh, good. It meant a lot to me when I had that shown to me. So I'm glad that it spoke to somebody else. Okay. What else? I want to take the rest of today's session to answer questions and see how you're doing as far as building out the expectation, if you start working as if you are a successful real estate agent, three months from now, you probably will be a fairly successful real estate agent. Kim said, love the idea of a graphic, visual people in pipeline. Yeah, that always. And something else that I did because I, um, again, I took this from someone else. Um, anytime that I lost a piece of business, and when I say lost, it wasn't, it could have been that I did something, or maybe they changed their area. Instead of 
that move that they were gonna that they were gonna make because of a job that job didn't end up happening but i always put a line through that person through that person's name in red because i needed to make sure that i needed to replace that person so i want you to be really cognizant of things change they move around you may think that you're killing it and things are going to be amazing 60 days from now. And then we have things like COVID happens. And you have a few transactions that either end or may end up being pushed out. What kind of questions do you guys have? I want to end the session that you have a plan for next, next week. I had a question. Okay. If um, like working with builders. Sure. I don't know a lot about that, but it's something that I'm interested in. There's a couple of builders that I've actually looked at and I wanted to find out as far as I think that, you know, that could be another source of lead generating, but I don't know really what to do with that. Okay. Do you have any insight on that? Have you ever done that yourself or? Yeah. Uh, well, in our area, we have a lot of builders. Huh? So a lot of building going on. And so you want to use it as lead generating. So when you say that you want to do it as lead generating, what kinds and number of clients do you want to be accountable to lead generating with builders in mind? Well, that's the thing is I really am not sure what that looks like at this point. I just know that that's something that I've wanted to do at least to you know, because there's not as many open houses going on, but that is a way to get in touch with buyers and sellers. And if we could fill in the blanks with something like that, um, you know, I know of some agents who have gone and sat with the builders model homes and that they're able to do some lead generating that way. Um, I just didn't know what we're able to do, I guess, as far as that goes. Well, you're 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 able to do that you are actually able to um, sit a model home and be an agent that could potentially help sell that model home if that builder will allow you to do it so you do have to um, check with the sales center and see if that's something that you can do and they do let people do it from time to time so just keep asking We've got enough builders out there there will be a builder that will say yes so have that in mind the other the other thing is you're going to be told no a lot as well because they want their salespeople to get the business and of course they want to sell sure those homes <clears throat> so that is something that you are going to have a lot of them say say no and it goes back to you can have you know nine out of ten of them may say no well that's okay i'll work with the one that says yes and when you do that, the other part is, is it an activity that you end up with enough business that the hours that you spend doing it produce enough business? So it can't, it can definitely do that. So just be really purposeful and make sure that when you do it, that you are getting the traffic that you anticipate. So you might want to look back at on the monthly basis, I'm going to sit at one every week, two hours. Friday afternoon, I'm gonna sit a builder and do it as if it's like an open house or an open um, model. And then um, after doing that time and time again, and one doesn't necessarily dictate how it's gonna be, you might decide that in the month of August, I'm gonna do it four times. And from that, I would expect if you're spending two hours that you should have one or two clients that you start working with from that time. And if that builder, you're not getting that um, type of results, move on to another builder, all this, you know, it's just a matter of consistently working on it. So that's one thing. Um, now, there's also, <coughs> um, and you just have to follow their guidelines because they do want to sell that property and 
you have to be careful as well um, as you, you don't go into open house or I'm sorry, you don't go into models and kind of fish around for the people that are visiting the models to try to be their real estate. Oh, of course. Yeah. Right. No, so I just no, want to no, be no. clear. I wanted to be clear because there's people on the, on the sure. line to make sure that we are clear on that part. Sure. Um, yeah. So that's something that you can do. Another thing that might actually get you further with your time Please. is going and doing a, um, a video tour of the area and of that model. And a lot of the time they're going to let a, you do Yeah, that. that's a good idea. That's a good idea to talk to them about doing it that way. Because imagine if you spent two hours and visited four models and did a short one minute video and then took that and marketed yourself on the weekly basis. Um, you know, you can film them all in one day. And then every week you put, you know, this is Builder Wednesday. I, I'm not very good at coming up with a name. I see where you're going. You're yeah. doing good. That's, I like that idea. <laughs> yeah. And that gives content. You do the tour. You know a little bit about the community. Here's why, you know, this is a great community for a lifestyle. You're um, two miles away from the highway, 10 miles from downtown Sarasota, those types of things. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. And that I is actually okay. like that better. I mean, I don't know. See, I don't know what I, I've heard different things about how builders pay agents depending on, you know, what they're selling. And a lot of times there's like, I guess, a commission on the base price if they bring a buyer. Um, I don't really know the ins and outs of that. So I didn't know if anybody has done that on the call if if you have or what you've experienced and if it is worth it because and so I like I actually like the idea of doing that better sure. in a way because I kind of need a little bit of freedom in what I do so well, for the yeah for the most part if you bring a buyer to a builder it's going to be they have it listed as far as what they're going to pay you so they're, they're pretty clear because they do that with everyone. And if they don't have it in writing, which they always have it in writing, but if they tell you something else that's not in writing to support it, just be careful because a builder would rather not have to pay. Right. For they don't sure. have to, because you know, they're all about the bottom line and yet they are expecting that most of their sales do come from real estate agents. Okay. What other questions do we have? We have 10 more minutes. I'll give you um, a little bit of real life as far as what it looks like as a real estate agent that um, what my life would look like when I was more of an agent and not in the position that I'm in now. While I'm still an actively licensed agent, my goal is to be working with you guys. Wake up in the morning. I typically was a person who was working by eight o'clock in the morning. And I would be between like an eight, eight o'clock and eight 30, go through my emails. If it was a quick answer and did not require a phone call or research, I went ahead and got rid of those. If it was something that was going to take me more than the amount of time that I was allowing myself that at eight 30, I was starting my lead generating, then I would have it that I would get back to that later on. And some of you guys that work with me, you might see this as a habit that if I haven't uh, responded back to you, whether or not we're having a class like this, I then will have a period of time until the afternoon or you know, 11 plus is when I respond to you if it's something that required a little bit more information. Yes, no, um, got those out of the way. So found out what that looked like. I had already planned my day, so I knew what my day was gonna look like. So basically from an 8.30 till about the 11.30, I would be doing lead generating and lead follow-up. Now my lead generating, yes, I would make phone calls, text messages, that type of thing. I also would do a lot of um, reaching out to people that I already knew and reassuring that I had a good relationship with them and also asking for business. So within the first few months of being a real estate agent, I built that I had 
200 or more, and you hear me all the time talk about the 200 people, I got to the point that I had 200 people that if I were to make a phone call or a text message to them, they knew who I was. Of course, 20 to 30 of them were good friends, family, that type of thing. And then outside of it, it might have been that I had a business relationship with them. So my 200, I was consistently reaching out to them on the daily basis. So I might have that I talked to on Monday, I talked to 10. On Tuesday, I talked to another 10. Wednesday, I talked to another. And I do that all week. That's still only 50. If you have 200, if you notice 50 in one week, there's four weeks in a, in a month, then I'm to the point that every single week, I am chipping away at that group of 200 people that I'm focusing, focusing on. And then the next month, I just start it all over again. Now that's with the 200. I should be adding to that and a race to 500 so that my communication, because people are busy. So even if I'm reaching out and trying to get a hold of 10 people every day, there's going to be half of them that don't have the time to chat. So if I have 500 people in my database, I probably have the ability to just keep calling or keep texting or sending a, a private message and checking in on them and reminding them that I'm a real estate agent. If I have 500 of those, then I'm able to, on the weekly basis, go through quite a bit that I probably get a two-way conversation going. And those are conversations that sound very much like, you know, how's it going? What's going on in your world? I saw on Instagram a picture of, you know, your son just graduated. Congratulations. It's so exciting. I remember when he was so little, that type of thing. And then, of course, um, um, you know, I whatever is going on in your life when it comes to real estate, super busy, multiple offers, all these other things. So you just have to make it conversational. You need to do that every day. Two to three hours a day is your lead generating and follow-up at a minimum. Then I would always be looking to learn something. And I may have, whether it was motivational during my lunchtime or just something to better myself, it might be that it's real estate, listening to a podcast or watching a video or something like that I might be doing. But it, it would tend to be, and I would do that um, during lunch that I'd have something on, that it wasn't about learning how to be a real estate agent. It was more about the mindset and that carried over from personal to business and business to personal. So I wanted to be a better person. Failed forward in that all the time, by the way. Didn't work every day. And yet I worked on that. And then in the afternoons, consistently working on what was my marketing that I was doing. A lot of the things that I did were online and so social media, blogs, all the variety of places that you can start to advertise yourself, LinkedIn, all these um, various mediums. And also on the regular basis, if I was not going out with clients and having appointments, I was ensuring that I would go over on the weekly basis, I was going over my listing presentations and buyer consultations and making sure that they were very relevant to the moment. Because what happens this month is not the same thing that happened last month. And there's a lot of things from an economy perspective that in, you know, there's some numbers that came out in the last, this past week or in the last 24 hours that they may make some changes. Next month might be a very different month than it was this past month. It may not, it might be pretty even. I don't know. Depends on how many people wanna buy and how many people wanna sell. But you do need to be paying attention to that. And then always at the end of the day, every day, ideally around that five o'clock period of time, which is not always five o'clock, but around the five o'clock, go through what does my day look like tomorrow? Is there anything that I still need to accomplish? Maybe it's a project or something to, to do because there's just loose ends everywhere with this kind of a business. 
and make sure that I allowed myself the time the next day to do whatever it is that I wasn't able to accomplish that day. Ideally, you accomplish everything. And also the reality is sometimes it's more of a project and not a to-do list for the day. So knowing that this week I have these things to do, ideally I want it to be completed by this time. And yet if I didn't complete it, have I moved forward in completing it? And have some time in your day that you know that something weird is going to happen. Whether it's personal or business, you end up that you get a phone call from somebody that it might be that you have a client that you're gonna take out and see properties the following day. So then you gotta make those appointments. So I would suggest allowing yourself on your schedule to have about an hour that is that potential business that is, um, you know, it, it's, on your, it's on your schedule, and let's say it's like one o'clock in the afternoon, that you're just assuming that you're gonna find a piece of business that you're going to need to do something with them the following day. And if that doesn't happen, utilize that time to learn something or to consistently practice and hone your skills. But put together your schedule and stick to it. If you have an expectation to make a lot of money in real estate, act like you're gonna make a lot of money in real estate. Start acting like a mega agent, if that's what you want. Start acting like a real estate agent, a successful real estate agent, whatever that success means to you. So it's 11 o'clock and it's Friday. Is there anything out there that you have a question about before we end the call today? Oh, I got stuff to do, so we can go. Oh, did I do? <laughs> yes. You've answered a lot of the questions. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Well, um, thank you very much. Thanks for the for the thumbs up, Brad. Uh, yeah, it's well, eleven o'clock, so well, I have a schedule. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. I appreciate it very, very much. Well, I'm excited for Giving you guys. Some good direction. Well, thank you. Let me know if you need anything, and I really appreciate you spending the time with me today. So thank have you. a great day and a great weekend. Thank you. Have a good weekend. Thank you. Have Bye, a great guys. weekend, everybody. Have you a great too. weekend, everybody. Thank you.